guys, it's Miss Christy from the Warnsburg branch and I'm back with another brain lab that you can do with items from around your home. The book is called Brain Labs for Kids, 52 Mind-Blowing Experiments, Models, and Activities to Explore Neuroscience by Eric H. Chudler. In Unit 3, you will learn about reflexes and complete Lab 13. Reflexes are quick, automatic movements that protect us from injury or help maintain posture and position. These involuntary movements occur in response to something in the environment and do not require conscious thought or decision making. For example, if your hand touches something hot, you will move your hand away. You already are moving your hand before you even realize it. This reflex stops your hand before it can become severely burned. Reflexes that happen below the neck do not need the brain to get involved. Instead, pathways of neurons responsible for spinal reflexes stay in the spinal cord. During a physical exam, doctors often test someone's reflexes. The strength of a reflex can help a doctor know what part of the nervous system is damaged. In Unit 3, there are different labs to test your reflexes. I will focus on Lab 13. For this lab, you will need rubber bands, a wooden spoon, and a large eraser. Make a reflex hammer by attaching the eraser to the spoon with a rubber band as shown in the picture. Have your test subject sit in a chair so that his or her legs can swing freely. Feel your test subject's knee below the kneecap. Notice the location of the soft spot. Tap the soft spot below the test subject's knee with the reflex hammer and observe the response of the leg. The brain is not required for the knee jerk reflex because the reflex pathway involves only nerves and the spinal cord. However, the brain can still influence the knee jerk reflex if someone thinks about stopping the leg movement. For example, if you tighten up your thigh muscles, your knee-jerk reflex may be smaller. To prevent conscious control over reflexes, try the Gendrasic Maneuver. To perform the Gendrasic Maneuver, have your test subject interlock their fingers. As you are performing the knee tap, tell your test subject to pull on their hands. Compare the knee-jerk response before, during, and after the Gendrasic Maneuver. Often, the Gendrasic Maneuver causes a large knee-jerk response. The knee-jerk reflex is called a myosynaptic reflex because there is only one synapsis in the circuit needed to complete the reflex. The tap below the knee causes the thigh muscle to stretch. Information is then sent to the spinal cord. After following one synapse and the ventral horn of the spinal cord, the information is then sent out back to the thigh muscle, which then contracts. Doctors examine a patient's knee-jerk reflex to test for problems in the nerves, muscles, and brain. A weak or absent knee-jerk reflex could indicate problems with the leg muscle, the nerve bringing sensory information from the muscle to the spinal cord, or the nerve from the spinal cord telling the muscle to move. If the leg continues to move back and forth after the knee tap, there could be a problem with the patient's cerebellum. Test Lab 13 out on family and friends and see what you can find out about their knee jerk reflex. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, 